Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be covering the last part of AS enthalpy changes of CIA level chemistry, which is measuring enthalpy changes, and that is by uh, the rise or decrease in some cases of temperature of water. And that we'll be measuring by using the formula Q is equal to MC delta T. Now, this is a formula that those of you who have taken IGCSE physics are familiar with and will continue to use in your AS chemistry and your A2 physics as well in the thermal, thermal physics part. Uh, and the questions from these are not that many and majority of the times they're simple as well. All you have to do is take a look at the, the enthalpy changes units to be able to decipher or be able to obtain the enthalpy change. So let's get to it. So most of the questions from measuring enthalpy changes will involve a solid or a liquid. Well, first of all, not, not a solid or a liquid, like first of all, just uh, a beaker of water. This is water, yeah, uh, on a gaze. This is like a gaze and a spirit lamp yeah with the the knot or the whatever you call it and uh, with a liquid x okay and this liquid x is burned and um the energy that it gives out to raise the temperature of water the temperature of water is measured uh by using the formula q is equal to mc delta t right and then it is used to calculate the enthalpy change of like burning this like the combustion of this i hope that makes sense now let's get a bit more into depth of this formula so this formula q is equal to mc delta t yeah where q is equal to the q is the heat energy in joules right this is the mass this is the specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity and this is the delta T is the change in temperature. You should be familiar with this by now because delta in usually means a change in something, right? And um, this equation like the value of C, the specific heat capacity of water is given in your data booklet as 4.18 uh, joules grams minus one, Kelvin minus one, uh, which is also equal to 4,180 4, joules kilo, kilograms minus one, K minus one. Uh, and the, like the value you use depends on the mass of water you're going to use. So if you're going to use mass of water in kilograms, this is the one you'll use. And if you're using the mass of water in grams, this is the one you're going to use. Uh, most of the physics students will most likely be using the one in kilograms because you do calculations in SI units in physics and kilo, uh, in SI units in physics. And kilograms is the SI unit of mass. But uh, in chemistry, uh, where we deal with like smaller quantities, you're more likely going to be using the grams version. So this is for chem. Okay. So what would the questions be like? Well, the questions will be like, uh, so first you'll be given a mass of water, right? Usually this is the type of questions that are given. You'll be given the mass of water, right? X kg. And you will be given the change in temperature of water that is y degrees Celsius or Kelvins, right? Uh, and then you will have to calculate uh, the change in energy. So the change in energy would be Q is equal to MC delta T, right? And you would get a value of uh, energy in joules, right? You get the value of energy in joules. And then uh, you'll be given, so usually you'll be given the mass. Okay, so sorry about that. Usually you'll be given the mass of this compound X. So X would be something, right? Uh, mass of compound wait what am i doing mass of compound x would be z grams right and um, you'll have to calculate the moles of this x 
and after you calculate the moles, uh, what is the unit of enthalpy changes? Well, the unit of enthalpy changes is kilojoules mole minus one. So how do you convert this Q joules of energy into um, this unit? Well, to convert joules to kilojoules, you have to divide this by a thousand, right? So that'll be Q kilojoules, right? And then uh, whatever moles of X you get, you uh, divide the Q kilojoules, divide by the moles. So you will get Q kilojoules mole minus one n, right? I hope that makes sense. And the reason why we're using the mass of X, right, over in this case is because you're burning X to raise the temperature of Y. So the energy, like the Q kilojoules of energy that is like used to raise the temperature of water is coming from X, assuming that there's no heat losses. And in your chemistry, uh, like CIA level chemistry, you'll usually assume that there's no heat loss because we can't, we haven't been taught or about how to account for heat loss. So you always assume um, the ideal scenario in which heat loss is negligible, okay? So those are most of the questions, like those are the basic types of questions that you can expect to see. It can get complicated, but when it does, you will have to um, work around it. So there's two example questions that I have from, uh, I was only able to find two questions up until 2017 past papers. Uh, and one of them is a relatively hard, more difficult question and the other one is the more common type. So let's get to it.